I was asked to show how I scan in and process these glass negatives. So I'm trying to do this little video tutorial to show you what I do. What I do is what Robin Clark does. It's not what other people may do. And I'm not going to say my way is the best. I'm just saying how I do it. And so in this case, I'm scanning four by five inch glass negatives, and I'm able to fit two on a bed. I have, this is unorthodox, but I have a nameplate that I'm using to line up my negatives with. And so that's, this is what I do. First, first thing I have to do is clean the glass. I just did, I did that before I started this video, but I cleaned the glass first. Okay. So now is part two. I've scanned them and I'm going to open them up in Photoshop. What I've done prior to scanning these is on the very first one, I created an action in Photoshop. You can create action. And in this action, I desaturate the the image so there will be no color. It will be black and white. And people may ask, why do you scan it in color and not in black and white? The reason I scan in color, and I always tell clients this, scan in color because that way you pick up all the tonal values. And if you just scan it in black and white, you may lose some, some data. And so that's why I do that. So for my purposes later, I will desaturate it. It's still a color image, but there's no color in it. And then I'm going to change the image size. I'm going to change it from the 1600 DPI to 900 DPI. And I'll save it as a JPEG. This is saved as a JPEG. Okay and then I'll close it. So this action allows me to quickly, and I'm gonna show you right here, I'm gonna click this button and this photo is gonna go away. So it did all the things that I told the action to do. It desaturated it and it reduced the image size, saved it as a JPEG and then closed the file. I have a, a TIFF file that is my archival image and I have a JPEG image that is the one I work on. And why do I have those two? The TIFF is higher resolution and so that quality will always stay there. I'm not going to touch that file at all. The JPEG image is the one that I'll work on. And I cannot have a large file in Photoshop when I'm working on these because every single layer, especially when I'm colorizing, every single layer adds memory to the file. And these files can get enormous. And so I, it makes it unworkable. So I will save a JPEG file, then that's the one I'm going to work on. That's the one I'm going to colorize or restore. And that's the one I'm going to be posting. And when I post, I reduced the resolution even more to prevent theft of the images. So what you see on Facebook, Reddit, Pinterest, Instagram is an even low resolution of the image. So this one is the other one that I scanned. I scanned two up at a time. And again, when I press this button behind the scenes, it's done those actions and now it's saved. So the next step is to save that JPEG file in Flickr and that'll be the next video. This is the next step in my process for scanning and storing photographs. So I upload this is a recent scan and I've been, I have 800 negatives that I just got in. I cannot scan them all at one time and process them effectively. So I am doing this incrementally. In this case, there's 12 negatives. 
that I scanned in this last stack. So I'll bring them into my Flickr account and I don't want these to be visible to other people. So I restrict who can see these. Then I will make a new folder for this batch. And I know it doesn't make sense to you, it makes sense to me. On, and I'll also add them to other albums in my Flickr account. So in this case, I'm adding to five different albums. One is a newly created album for this bunch of negatives and the others are for other purposes. And that's one thing I like about Flickr is you just add the photo once and then you can put it in whatever album you want to. And that's, that's fantastic. So I will upload these. It takes a minute to upload. And so here's my overall Flickr page. Some of the things on Flickr are available to the public. Some are just for my purposes. I store my a copy of all my negatives here and it's the JPEG files that I, I store here. So I'll go find the album and these are, this represents actually the ones I've done so far. So I have done this is the 13th stack. So like I said, they they range between 12 and 20 negatives in a stack. And these are what I have done so far. Now I have created a URL for all these images. And so when I click here, that's the URL. And I can copy this and I'll show you the next step in the next video. So once again, each photo now has a URL and I'll, I'll show you this. I just, this photograph is great. Can't wait to do this one. But yeah, there's a lot of great photos in here. So that's, this is the next step in my process. And so I have dual monitors, so some of the things you're not seeing. But on the other monitor, I pulled up the first picture and I copied the URL and I'll put it in here. And this is a QR code generator, so I'll download that. And then I've already put in here on this Excel spreadsheet what photos are in the album. So in this Excel, in this Excel spreadsheet, I have certain things in here. And one is the name of the album in Flickr. And this will all have a Flickr uh, URL. So it'll link right to the Flickr page. And that'll be what I do at the end. I'm not going to do that now. This represents the bin that they're in, and this is bin 45, and I'm getting ready to finish up this bin. It's full, so I'm going to go to bin 46. Probably this will take me six bins, to uh, the 800 negatives, six bins to fill, so I'll be at 51, 52. So far I have 4,239 negatives in here, and i got a bunch more to add on this load, so I'm over 4,000 negatives. That's why I'm up to 45 bins. I'll put in this section the date taken, if I know it. The photographer, if I know it. When I ordered it, the size. And this is wrong, so I had to fix it. <laughs> and the eBay order, who I ordered it through, where it was taken, and how many. Also, I have another section here that I'm not going to show. So that's uh, the process. So I created the QR code here, and then I added the hyperlink on my Excel spreadsheet so that I can go back to it at any time and find where it is. 
And I know that seems like a lot of work, and it is, but it's it's necessary because otherwise I will never be able to find these things. So I'm going to stop here and go to the next step. This is the next step on my process, and I created the QR codes in the QR code generator, and now I'll bring them over here. This is a Photoshop file that I created for one inch labels that I have. And get rid of that. That was the old one that just let me know where I left off. And so I'll just add these QR codes in here and then I'll print them. I printed out the QR codes, they're on label paper, and then I'm going to adhere them to this acid-free sleeves after they're wrapped in acid-free paper. Once I have the barcode on the sleeve, I will then wrap up the negative in acid-free paper and insert it in the sleeve. See, I've already done these, so once that's done, I'll put them in the bin. And then I will label the bin. One last thing I want to talk about is uh, people asked previously, how do I clean them? This is PEC 12. It's a photographic emulsion cleaner, and I've never had any issues with it. This is just the pads that you use. These are lint-free, and... They don't hurt their ultra self, they call them, and they don't hurt the emulsion. So this is what I use to clean them with. I hope that helps.